Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> My name is Richard van der Oost, and uh, I've been using Blender for about six years. I'm uh, from the Netherlands, and uh, I'm currently working on a very exciting project where I use Blender to protect athletes. Um, I'm going to tell you all about it, but before I do, I want to quickly go over some of the previous things I've been doing with Blender to give you some idea of where I'm coming from. So, six years ago, I installed Blender for the first time, and uh, I got very confused about the user interface at first, but also kind of excited to see that there's so many things I didn't know, so it should mean that there's a lot to learn. And so I did, I, I started learning, and in 2011, I started my first business, uh, SurfRender, which is a 3D animation studio, and we do mostly uh, scientific visualizations, and uh, kind of for the biomedical industry. Um, so of course, in the beginning, that was really simple stuff, but as time went on, it, it went more complex, and occasionally, we we did um, visual effects things. Uh, and because I, I was learning about visual effects, in 2012, Jonathan Williamson contacted me from uh, CG Cookie. I'm sure you have, you've heard of him. Um, and he asked me, can you do some tutorials about visual effects using Blender for CG Cookie? And uh, it was a pretty big honor for me because I've been using Blender, uh, I've been using CG Cookie to to learn myself uh, in the beginning. So it was a great way to give something back to the community using, uh, using their network. So I did, I made a handful of tutorials and uh, just out of curiosity, who has ever seen one of my tutorials on CG Cookie? All right, cool. It's been a while ago and then I've, I've been, heard, I've been uh, talking to people and they said that it's kind of hard to find them uh, right now. Um, Anyway, while I was doing these tutorials, I was still doing serve render projects, and I kind of run into a problem where the rendering went too slow. So in 2013, I started Blender Grid, which is an online render farm. So kind of made it for myself, but I also made it publicly available at blendergrid.com. And since then, a lot of people have been using it, so it feels great to solve some problems that the community has. Um, so yeah, if you ever run into the problem where you need more render power, you can check out blendergrid.com and see how that goes. So that's kind of the things I've been doing uh, before I started uh, helping athletes. So this year, uh, 2016, I got involved with 3D Mouthguard, which is a startup that produces mouthguards for athletes. And mouth guards are uh, pieces you put in your mouth to protect your teeth from impacts from uh, yeah during sports. And I'm involved with this because I have a background in 3D. And at 3D Mouth Guard, we want to produce mouth guards using a completely digital workflow. So we want to use things like uh, 3D scanning and 3D printing. Um, and I immediately thought about using Blender in that workflow. So to show you a little bit more on uh, how mouth guards are used, uh, we've prepared a little video that uh, yeah, shows you some, some sports where, where they use mouth guards.
Yeah, so as you can see, there's a lot of different sports where mouth guards are being used, and these are the kind of people we, we want to help uh, using our product. Uh, currently, we're not in production yet. Uh, we have to wait with that one. Uh, we're not in production. Uh, currently, we're, we're doing prototypes and experiments uh, and, and a lot of tests, which is actually pretty exciting uh, to work on and just to play around with different, uh, different techniques. So I want to step you through uh, the process of making our first prototype mount guard. Uh, and it's five steps. Uh, so let's uh, start at the beginning. We start with the athlete. Uh, we want to make mount guards fit perfectly to uh, the athlete, so we want to make personalized um, mount guards. So we start with a 3D scan of the teeth of the athlete. And this picture might look like we are at a dentist, but um, the scanner we use only needs uh, a laptop, and you're basically set. So this was actually at a hockey club in the Netherlands, and uh, we scanned a bunch of hockey players. So the good thing about this is you can do it anywhere and go where most of the athletes are and uh, yeah, scan them. Uh, the scanner works by taking pictures of the teeth and using photogrammetry to uh, stitch them together and to generate the 3D model. And this process takes about five minutes uh, currently. There is a new scanner out, which is a lot faster, because instead of taking individual pictures, it takes a video of the teeth. So you can just swipe around the teeth a few times, and it will generate your model. Uh, and that really speeds up the process. So this software um, that does the photogrammetry uh, spits out STL files. So that's great, because we can import that into Blender. And then it looks something like this. Uh, as you can see, it's really detailed and a uh, yeah, really accurate scan. Um, so currently, we have a great way to do a scan, get it into Blender, and now we have a model of the teeth of the athlete. But that's not what we want to print. Um, what we want to print is actually the, the material around the teeth. So now what? We, we want to print the material around the teeth, so um, we have to come up with some kind of way to, uh, to do that. And the first thing we thought of was to somehow generate a generic model of a mouth card that's being used by, by everybody, basically, and then combine it with the personalized scan and create a perfect fit. And the first thing that came to mind for me was to use Blender's Boolean operation, uh, the Boolean modifier, because this allows you to take an object and cut out part of it based on another object. And that's basically what we want to do here. And I remember when I just started using Blender, the Boolean modifier was, was nice to do some, something with cubes and maybe basic, basic objects, because it was pretty slow and not very reliable. Um, but we've come a long way with this, uh, thanks to the, the developers. And right now, it's possible to do very complex things uh, with the Boolean modifier, and it's very, um, very fast and very reliable. So now we're able to do actually uh, very nice things like this. And here I have a little screencast of how I uh, prepared the generic model. This is actually... Um, a scan of an existing mouth guard, just for reference. And I used that. It's not very, very nice, the, the scan, but I used it to just test out this concept. Please uh, start playing. So I bring in the, the scan of the mouth guard, the blue one, and I lay the, the scan of the teeth on top of it. And as you can see, the the scan doesn't fit entirely, so I use the sculpting tools in Blender to add some more material around the teeth here. And it's far from pretty, but it just uh, saves time. And just uh, as a quick test, we've used this, this model. And then when we apply the, uh, the Boolean modifier, uh, can you go to the next one? 
Thanks. Uh, when we apply the Boolean modifier, it looks like this. And this, is, this model perfectly fits uh, the athlete because it's based on the, the scan we made. And it already starts looking like a mount guard. So the next step is to uh, prepare it for printing. Um, so here you can see the last steps, applying uh, the Boolean modifier. And then uh, we end up with this. It's not yet ready for printing because there's some errors with the model. Some uh, bridge-like structures uh, you can see here. I had to remove those. And they are a result of basically gaps between the teeth that if you, when you apply the modifier, it, it kind of inverses those gaps, so it becomes like a, a connection, uh, some sort of a bridge structure, which I'm removing here. And then again, I use the sculpting tools in Blender, which are great for this kind of work, especially when you're working with a, a tablet. Uh, it feels like you're working with a, with a physical model. And I also use the Dino Topo option, which uh, ensures to make the topology across the model kind of even. And this works really well for uh, preparing it for printing. So I'm kind of smoothing out uh, certain parts, not the parts where the mouth guard touches the teeth, because then it wouldn't fit anymore, but just kind of the edges of the model. All right, and then we're ready for printing, so we send it off to a, a printer. Yeah. And that's the result. Um, I actually have this model with me. This is our first prototype we printed. It has been printed on an Ultimaker 2, uh, which we had to modify, because mouth guards are flexible. They, they need to be flexible to, to wear them properly and to protect uh, your teeth. So we needed to print using a flexible uh, plastic. And this is pretty hard. Uh, we developed um, together with uh, uh, a plastic producer from the Netherlands, we developed um, this material. It's not on the market yet. Uh, and we also had to modify the 3D printer for this. Because usually the, the Ultimaker works by pushing through the material onto the nozzle, the, the plastic wire. Uh, this didn't work because it kind of uh, the, the wire got stuck because it was too flexible. So instead of pushing it, we had to modify it to pull it through. I don't have pictures of this, unfortunately. Uh, but basically, what we did was instead of pushing it, we pulled it through, and that worked. And after a lot of tweaking with the temperature, the melting temperature, and the speed of printing, we ended up with this. And yeah, our first prototype. So these are the five steps we have to go through from zero, basically, to scan, um, from zero to a uh, mouth guard. And the next thing we could do is just to improve on these things. So let me talk about two major improvements uh, we made. So the first one is obviously the generic model. Um, I started off with a very ugly scan. And now that I have had proven the, the concept, uh, I went off to the Blender network uh, looking for a, a professional modeler who had uh, experience with 3D printing as well. And I found a guy uh, named Julien Deville from uh, France. And I started working with him, and I gave him some input. And uh, the model on the right is what he came up with. And this uh, is, of course, night and day. The, the difference. Um, so, yeah, when we used the second generic model and cut out the scan out of it, sent it off to a printer, we got this green uh, model. And this, we initially printed it again with the Ultimaker, but then we found an even better material, which was not able to, uh, we weren't able to print it on the Ultimaker, so we we used a lulz bot uh, for printing this green one. And uh, yeah, this, this material was more flexible and worked better. Uh, so that's the first big improvement we made. And it already starts to look like a real mouth guard now. 
I also have this uh, model with me, so you can take a look at it after the presentation if you like. Uh, second improvement is uh, kind of the, using different printing techniques. Um, this is a print we made, and at about 25% of printing, it stopped because of an error. But it allows you to really see what's going on inside, uh, how this structure is being made. And we can change this, so we can add uh, yeah, a different structure uh, inside what you see here. Uh, and that allows us to do different tests, uh, like impact tests, um, and seeing how comfortable it, it is to wear. Um, and that's actually curr currently still going on, so that's uh, the second improvement we're, we're still working on. Now, we still have a lot of challenges, and I want to talk about two. So the first challenge is still finding a good material to print. Because, of course, it has, to be, uh, it has to be flexible, and that's really hard to print, so that's already a challenge. But then it has to be strong enough to offer protection, uh, enough protection, and also it has to be safe to wear uh, health-wise. So, yeah, we don't want our, our athletes to get sick from, from wearing our mouth guards. So, uh, that's very important, and we just found a material that um, is actually safe to wear. Um, previously, we had a material that was safe, but we didn't know about it after printing, because you, you're melting it and you're modifying it. But now we actually found a material that is safe, so we can, uh, from now on we can start actually testing the mouth guards with real people. Um, so that's very exciting. Okay, yeah. Um, so now, yeah, we, we are about to make new prototypes with this new material that can actually be tested. Um, so then we get a lot more feedback and room for improvements. Uh, so that's what we're currently doing. Uh, the second very big challenge, uh, that's probably the biggest challenge, is to automate Blender to do the work. Because it's all nice and fun to make some prototypes by hand and uh, yeah, play around with Blender. But once we're in production, we, we want to make maybe even hundreds uh, of these things. So then it's, it becomes a really tedious task. So I'm currently looking into automating Blender to um, take in the scan, align it with the, with the generic model, uh, do the cut. Maybe we even have to uh, do modifications to the generic model, because not every scan is uh, as wide as the other, so uh, th that's very challenging. And um, also coming up with an algorithm that smooths out the, the mouth guard after we did the, the Boolean operation will be very challenging. So I kind of want to do a shout out to people that know Python. Unfortunately, there's a Python workshop going on in the other room, so probably everybody is going there. But if you know Python and you think this is an exciting, uh, challenging uh, project, please talk to me, and uh, maybe we can work together. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's the two challenges we are, we're currently facing. So there's the whole process. We uh, start with a scan. Um, scanning the athlete, getting it into Blender, uh, using a generic model to cut out the scan, and to um, using the, uh, the sculpting tools in Blender to, to make it smooth and printable, and finally sending it out to a printer and get it printed. OK. Um, so yeah, that's how we use uh, Blender to protect athletes. If you have any questions for me, um, can we do questions actually live? Okay. If you have questions, please do it. Uh, okay. You can come to me um, and uh, talk to me during the conference. I'll be here uh, the, tomorrow as well. Um, if you're watching this online, you can mention me uh, on Twitter at Richard VD Oost. You can check out the website, uh, treemoutguard.fit, or my personal website, blendergrid.com. 
So yeah, that's how we uh, protect athletes using Blender. Thank you.